welcome to the Science for Trans Foundation. Settle down, class. Stop it. That's gross. Good girl talk. Now, everybody, pay attention. Awesome. Well then, everybody. Welcome to 21st Century Trans UK. And I thought I would do a foundation introduction to essentially the very complex subject that is science of gender and sex because it's not as simple as the gits would have you believe but this is just the foundation this is yes hopefully it'll be easy enough to understand for you if not put up your hand and ask a question <laughs> anyway so Sex, gender, transition, things like that. It happens in nature. Okay? Whilst the concept of gender is very much a social construct, the behaviour patterns and things like that, questionable. But some animals do spontaneously change physical sex. I know, wouldn't that be amazing if we could do that as well? And I know what you're thinking. I would have studied a lot harder if my science teacher looked like this. Anyway, I digress. The most famous and well-studied example is the clownfish or Finding Nemo. And what would have happened in nature is if Nemo's mum died, vanished, whatever, what would have happened is Nino, Nemo's dad, over the space of a few weeks, would have changed into a fully functional, fertile, female clownfish. Exactly. How amazing is that? And transgender behaviour has been observed in, high, in mammals as well. There is a very famous example of the lionesses as well. They can do it, grow full manes. Deep growls, every, everything. Amazing animal. And the reason I decided to do this video was I saw a snippet of a lecture. Um, it was from 13 years ago, but it was fascinating. It really gripped me because I have a biology based degree and I love science, which is why I'm doing this. Anyway, so, it was on the neurological differences between women, sorry, cis females, cis males, and trans people. Now then, whilst there is certain neurological differences, a lot of scientists say that there's more in common than there is that differentiates. However, this one video which I will post the link to, was on about an area that we will call just the BST area of the brain, which is near the back. Yeah. And in cis males, it has twice as many of a certain type of nerve than present in cis female brains. And it was on about a study that showed trans brains even before hormone treatment have the same amount as of this nerve in that particular portion of the brain as a cis female rather than a cis male. They also did different things with that experiment because I looked it up and then I thought oh this is a bit I think it was from 1990 seven or something like that. And I thought, well, let's get something a bit recent. And I found a paper that led after that one, another scientific investigation that cited it as a reference. And amazingly well done science showed again 
that this neurological difference is a special neurotransmitter in things, which I'm not going to go into in this video, um, but there will be a more in-depth science-heavy video to accompany this if you want to know a bit more about the actual proper nitty and gritty science. And yes, it was fascinating stuff, fascinating reading. So structural differences in the brains. Um, that's before even cross-sex hormone treatments. After that, obviously, you get differences again because of hormones. But before hormones, this little part of the brain. So I was like, ooh, interesting. I like that. Um, going on from there. So what could influence that? Key question is probably, is genes involved? Now, genes is involved in everything that your body does. And it's essentially the computer coding that creates your body. Good way to think of it is your, your DNA code, or your genes, otherwise known as your genome, is essentially the computer program that creates how you turn out. And I read in a paper after that, that went into the genes because even though XX typically creates a biological female and XY typically creates a biological male, this is not true all the time. It's not. Scientifically speaking, there are three biological naturally occurring genders in the human species. Male, female, and intersex. Don't ignore them. They are they are real. They're a proper group of people. There are three scientific sexes. And obviously genes are involved in everything that we do. Um, with regard to that portion of the brain, it was investigated to see if certain genes that allowed cells to react to the different sex hormones were possibly involved in this. Because if a cell can't properly understand the testosterone signals or the estrogen signals, it's going to develop a different way. Um, a good example of this is something called complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. And the best example I can give you on this is there was a lady in World War II and she was big in the Girl Guides and she was actually given a medal after the war for helping get the Girl Guides into the war effort. Amazing lady. And she was known as the perfect 1940s housewife, the perfect neighbour and she was big in the community and she was very much a woman. She never had any kids, she couldn't have children, but they adopted a few kids. And then one day she goes to the doctors and they do the examinations and she had breasts, vagina, everything. When they did the examination they found out, however, inside the vagina was an undeveloped penis and testes that hadn't developed properly. And she was biologically, it's a form of intersex, uh, but her genome was probably XY. So, but was she any less of a woman? Exactly. Doesn't always happen the way you learn at high school because that is very, very, very simplified science. It doesn't go into all the complexity and the nuances that actually exist in this. Yes. And the thing is as well with the genetics, we share 60% of our DNA with fruit flies. And that doesn't mean that 60% of our bodies are insect. Does it? No. No, it doesn't. So, going on to that, on from that, 
we are going to go into more how these genes are expressed. And this is a fascinating, fascinating area of research called epigenetics. Big word alert. And epigenetics isn't what the your DNA says, because right now you could be XX or XY and do not know unless you have your genome sequence. What epigenetics is, isn't what the coding is, isn't what your genes are, but how those genes are expressed. Which ones turn on, which ones turn off. That is epigenetics. And it's fascinating stuff. Again, I'm not going to go into the specifics and the complexities of it in this video. I will do this in the accompanying video because it's fascinating, fascinating stuff. Anyway, so there is a research scientist and she is a world-renowned and published uh, biologist, microbiologist, specialising in ribosomes, which is another fascinating thing that I'm not going to get in here. And she did a TED talk, I'll leave a link, uh, on epigenetic trends, because basically, again, it's how the genes are expressed rather than what they say and what they code for. And the basic theory of this is when human beings are fetuses, up until a certain developmental stage, they are female. Anybody my age who's seen Jurassic Park knows that that's true by, for all vertebrate embryos. Start off female. And then, <coughs> pardon me, around the first trimester, six to seven weeks in, there is, that's when it will generally go one way or the other, male or female, at that point. But the brain doesn't start to differentiate structures until the second or third trimester. So genitals happen first, and then the brain. Now, anything can happen in the womb that causes a the genes to express differently. It may have started out one way, but something happens and it changes that. Again, I'm not going to go into the mechanisms here, I'm going to leave that for the more advanced video. However, so basically what can happen is fetus starts to develop, undifferentiated at first, all start off female. Around the first trimester, the body goes one way. But then, and literally this could be anything, anything, it could be a change in temperature, it could be a knock, a bump, it could be the expectant mother eats a curry or something. I don't know, could, anything can do this. Literally anything can do this, but it causes the genes to express differently. And the brain differentiates the other way. So in my case, my body initially went male, and my brain started to go female. It's fun. That is a very, very basic roundup of what's going on. Um, more data is needed on this. A lot more data is needed because you get some experiments that show results one way, but then you'll get another experiment that backs it up and another experiment that doesn't, that refutes it. And generally this is because there's not enough test subjects in these studies. There needs to be more data. And from my educated point of view, the cause is probably more likely a very well mixed transgentini of things that have to happen at the same time. 
for a human to develop into a transgender individual. If you are interested in this, go and look at my more advanced video because I'll be going into the science into a lot greater detail and I will post all the links, all the references to all the scientific papers I read about this in the last few days to make these videos. If you have liked this video at all, please like and subscribe, reach out, join my channel's, what's it called? That community group I've got. I can't remember. <laughs> oh God, this one. Join that, whatever it's called, I can't remember. Um, and chat, you can talk to me, you can ask me questions, you can join a community. And we're trying to get a community to help each other. But, as ever, if you are transitioning, if you're even thinking of transitioning, you are so brave. And I love you for it. Take care, stay safe, stay in school.